Welcome to the Fringe Topics channel. To our returning subscribers, thank you for your support. It's greatly appreciated. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe and join us on the exploration of the Fringe. A building with a mysterious and dark history stands at 640 South Main in downtown Los Angeles. This is the Cecil Hotel, also known later as Stay on Main, or Just Stay. Over the years, the Cecil Hotel garnered notoriety due to its unusually high occurrence of thefts, mysterious deaths, homicides, and instances of accidental deaths. The hotel's history is shrouded in a haunting darkness that resonates within one's soul. Over time, the hotel's evolution from a beacon of elegance to a center of eerie events is evident. In this series, we will uncover the stories that have made this place a source of fascination and curiosity for many. We will investigate the events that happened here, the people who lived here, and the questions that remain unanswered. Constructed in 1924 by three tycoons, William Banks Hanner, Charles L. Dix, and Robert H. Shops, the Cecil Hotel stands as a testament to opulence amid an era of prosperity. Designed as a hub catering to both tourists and global business travelers, it emerged as a captivating magnet. The proprietors injected around $3 million into the venture. That's the equivalent of about $53 million today. Thus, on December 20th, 1924, the hotel commenced operations, boasting an exquisitely designed lobby bedecked with marble interiors, stained glass windows, potted palm trees, and alabaster statuettes. A remarkable 4,000 pieces of handcrafted furniture and walnut dressers were meticulously transported to the premises. This grand hotel boasts 700 rooms spread over 14 levels. Notably, there is no floor labeled 13 because of age-old superstitions surrounding the number 13. Historically, the number 13 has been associated with bad luck in various cultures and traditions. For instance, in Western culture, the number 13 is often considered unlucky due to its associations with negative events, like the Last Supper, where there were 13 individuals present, and the subsequent betrayal of Jesus. Similarly, in Norse mythology, a banquet of 12 gods was disrupted by a 13th uninvited guest, leading to chaos. Given these cultural associations, many people are wary of the number 13, especially when it comes to where they sleep. Hotels, wanting to ensure guest comfort and maximize occupancy, often skip labeling a 13th floor to avoid any negative connotations and potential booking hesitations. Instead, they label the floor after the 12th as the 15th, even though it's technically the 13th to put guests at ease. The hotel enjoyed a prime location right within the reach of the city's extensive public transit system. This proximity allowed commuters to access various parts of the city easily, including the renowned Pacific Electric Railway System, which during the 1920s stood as the world's largest electric railway network. Nestled right in the heart of the bustling downtown metropolitan area, the hotel provided a convenient hub for travelers with multiple choices at their disposal. In close proximity to the hotel, one could find an array of shops, dining establishments, theaters, and even the Spring Street Financial District. Due to its close proximity to the Pacific Electric Railway System, the hotel's management chose not to incorporate a parking facility for automobiles, a decision that would eventually contribute to the hotel's decline. The hotel offered a variety of accommodations, from rooms with communal bathrooms to those with private toilets or even in-room bathrooms with showers, which at the time was a luxury. Depending on the chosen room type, prices varied between $1.50 and $2.50 per night. The rates made the hotel a cost-effective option. All the rooms were approximately the same size with exceptions of the bathrooms. The rooms were just large enough to get a bed and dresser in, and they all had tall windows that opened outwardly as there were no fans or air conditioning in the rooms due to the yearly average temperature for Los Angeles being between 54 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit. In the early years, the hotel attracted a steady stream of visitors, with a handful even regarding it as their home. Within its walls dwelled numerous respectable and unassuming individuals. Nevertheless, every now and then, a less reputable guest managed to gain access. Registration merely required a signature, without any need for identification. In this era, the act of checking in allowed you to assume any desired identity. Within the history of the Cecil Hotel, there is evidence of 19 arrests, two missing persons, four attempted murders, nine murders, five natural deaths, four foiled deaths, and 29 unsolved murders or so-called accidental deaths. Three serial killers lived at the hotel. It had five fires and a myriad of supernatural or ghostly encounters. 
As the years passed, the hotel was thought to be cursed and haunted due to guests and residents that met unusual, bizarre, and freak accidents. These events are meticulously recorded and we will cover a lot of them throughout this series, however it's a certainty countless others likely remain unrecorded. Whether they were of a natural, mysterious, inconsolable, or otherworldly nature, the ultimate result is somber, tragic, and disheartening. Now, we begin our journey to uncover the events that contributed to the hotel's decline. We'll explore these in chronological order, delving into each individual or event that played a role. We will start in the 1920s. The initial problem with the hotel was a design flaw. The Hotel Cecil lacked parking facilities. As the saying goes, timing plays a crucial role in life, and regrettably, the timing for the Cecil Hotel was less than ideal. When it was in the planning and design stages around 1920, parking amenities were not even a consideration for hotels in large cities. However, in the later 20s, car ownership in Southern California experienced a significant surge. This would have an overall effect in registrations at the hotel. On April 9, 1925, Richard Buck, a Cecil Hotel bellboy, was arrested for illegally selling alcohol to the guests. This occurrence just happened to be during the era of prohibition, when the sale of liquor was prohibited. He was apprehended in a police operation at the hotel. In this sting operation, a male and female police officer posed as guests and requested alcohol from the bellboy. Upon his delivery of the liquor to their room, he was promptly arrested after a small scuffle ensued. The hotel had been opened for less than four months when this occurred, and this would be the beginning of a long history of criminal misconduct at the hotel. In 1926, two residents of the hotel met their end within its walls, both succumbing to natural causes or illnesses. This would be the first deaths registered at the hotel. On June 18, 1926, William F. McKay was discovered. At 62 years old, McKay was a mining operator hailing from Arizona. Following his passing, he was laid to rest in his former home of Colfax, Washington. Then on October 5, 1926, the hotel bore witness to the passing of Harold Winter Simons. At just 46, Simons was the former secretary of the famous Simons Brick Company. He had been living in the hotel for about a year, following his divorce. Health issues had troubled Simons for several years. His death was attributed to a cerebral hemorrhage as confirmed by the coroner. Having no signs of trauma to the head, it was ruled the hemorrhage was from natural causes. On January 22, 1927, Percy Ormond Cook, a successful 52-year-old real estate broker from Providence, Rhode Island, tragically fell victim to depression. On January 31, 1927, John Kornovich, also known by the alias Cronure, was apprehended at the Cecil Hotel. Recognized as a cunning thief with a courteous and friendly manner, he specialized in stealing jewelry and precious stones. His thefts amounted to an estimated value of $50,000. When questioned, Kornovich staunchly denied both his identity and any knowledge of the stolen items. An initial search of his room turned up nothing. However, upon closer inspection, officers noticed scorch marks on two talcum powder containers. Inside, they discovered a trove of diamonds, pearls, other jewelry, and small burglary tools. Among the recovered items, gems worth $6,000 were identified as stolen property, belonging to Mrs. Agnes Clune of Oakland. As a result, Kornovich was arrested and charged with theft. On September 3, 1927, Edmund Bennett Jr., a 31-year-old resident of the Cecil Hotel, tragically lost his life adding to the growing list of those believed to be cursed by their association with the hotel. He met his end in an airplane crash while distributing advertising leaflets over Alhambra, California. His death certificate cited multiple fractures. Interestingly, while Bennett Jr. succumbed to his injuries, the pilot, though injured, survived the ordeal. In August 1929, the shadow of the Great Depression began to loom large. The preceding events were merely a harbinger of the challenges ahead. Tragically, the Cecil Hotel, along with the rest of the United States, faced adversity as the stock market crashed. This financial catastrophe, combined with subsequent bank failures and a prolonged drought, marked the onset of the 1930s Great Depression. Just five years after the Cecil Hotel welcomed its first guests, these tragic events cast a deep shadow over it, leaving an enduring imprint of melancholy and gloom. It swiftly transformed into a refuge for those crushed by unemployment and the loss of their homes and possessions. Often, they would arrive at the hotel with their scant remains, seeking a glimmer of optimism for a better tomorrow, only to be met with despair. During the rise in homelessness, 
the Cecil Hotel found itself entangled in the notorious region of Los Angeles called Skid Row. This district became LA's designated area for the homeless and those freshly discharged from prisons, jails, and mental institutions. It acted as a buffer zone, separating these individuals from the broader city. The hotel's resilience gave rise to a dark and eerie reputation, overshadowing both residents and visitors with misfortune. The once glorious Cecil Hotel saw its grandeur fade, leading to its decline. It transformed into a lodging for transient folks and daily wage workers, no longer attracting tourists and business travelers. So by the end of the 20s, the Cecil's tragic fall is well underway. Be looking for and join us on the next episode as we take a look at the tragedies that befall the hotel starting in the 30s. Thank you for spending your time with us at the Fringe Topics channel. If you enjoy our content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. It truly makes a difference, and we're deeply grateful. Remember, our content is driven by your suggestions. If there's a topic you're curious about, drop us a hint at fringetopicsforum.com slash tips. A special thanks to our patrons who make the channel possible. We could not do it without you. If you would like to support the channel, consider becoming a member of our Patreon. Get access to ad-free videos and exclusive content. Also, check out our Fringe Topics store featuring unique t-shirts and more. The links are in the video description. That's all for today. Stay safe and we'll see you next time.